Okay, hi there. This is our 100N Condensate 4 video. Uh, Condensate 4 was in the 109 building and also the 184 powerhouse building. We're only going to mention the 109 building. Uh, Condensate 4 ran from the hot well to the pump suction basically. So we added a few more things on this. Um, basically this system you had your drive turbines in one of nine buildings set up on the main floor and down the minus 16 you had the surface condensers. The exhaust out of the drive turbines came down through an expansion joint to the top of the surface condenser. These are capable of condensing 138,000 pounds of steam per hour. Uh, here the steam spread out and encountered the tubes. Uh, these were tube supports in here. I'd like to see inside one of these when it's running. I imagine it's pretty violent, all the steam being condensed to water rapidly. Uh, the tubes, there's 1,310 inch OD, uh, BWG, they're Admiralty metal. It required 6,800 gallons a minute of 60 degree water for condensing the steam. You had your raw water service came in, uh, went down the bottom to the other water box, then it reversed and came back through the top of the tubes and then to the raw water return. The normal level in this was 22 inches. High level is 25 inches. Uh, low level is four inches. Held about 1,500 gallons in normal level. From here, you had your suction line to your dump condenser condensate pump. The problem with these pumps, this is in a vacuum in here, so it's actually trying to pull up from 33 feet. So it's the same as having the suction 33 feet down here, it's trying to pull up. The way they make this style pump work, there's a vent line that goes from the pump suction back to the top of the surface condenser. So it sees the way of the water. This here is at the vacuum pressure. So you just have the weight of the water. Uh, some surface condensers will use a deep well pump. Sometimes they'll be 33 feet down pump well. And down here, it'll give you back to zero atmospheric pressure because the way the water, the water weighs uh, 2.34 feet per pound. So the vent line was critical in order for this pump to start. Uh, it was a two-stage pump. The center impeller was a double suction, and then that fed the two second stage impellers on each end of the pump that created pressure on the shaft so it couldn't leak air in. Uh, for startup, use de min water through a check valve that would feed the pump seals. And when the pump is running, you take off the discharge through a check valve. So this water here went to the pump seals from here, the discharge is technically condensate five. Uh, I went up to the steam jet air ejectors. You had the inner condenser went through first. Uh, it was a, went through the tubes to condense the steam from the steam jet air ejector. Then from there, it went down to the after condenser. I uh, went up to the condensate level control valve. This maintained the level in the condenser. At low flows, this valve would open to maintain flow through the inner and after condensers. From there, it went to a block valve. Um, from This would go to the header heading back to 184 deaerator. If you had bad water quality, you could dump this back to the raw water return. And I've also heard they could fill this with filtered water for checking for tube leaks. Uh, I'd fill this with water, go in the water boxes, look for tube leaks, and they could plug the tubes that were leaking. When that was done, you start up, you just dump the water back to raw water return until you had uh, good water coming back. Up here was the steam jet air ejector air removal port. Usually you want to take the air off uh, down the lower end of the surface condenser where most of the air started to accumulate. Up here it's steam, very little air, so you want to condense all the steam and what's left you pull out with a vacuum. Uh, this would be basically air, a lot of steam in it, go to the, we had a hogger that would use for startup. This just used steam pressure coming across and sent to atmosphere to pull the vacuum quick. 
Uh, we did a video on how the steam jet air ejectors worked a while back. It went to the first stage, the air condenser. Uh, this pulled the vacuum. It had steam pressure coming in the top. The steam jet that created a vacuum. It'd pull it. The steam would be condensed. The condensate from here went down through a loop seal and back to the surface condenser. This would pull it down really pretty good on the vacuum. Then the second stage would pull it down the rest of the way. So you had another steam jet air ejector take any air or anything on this one, pull it through another stage, and this went through a trap and that water went back to the surface condenser. Off your after condenser, the air here went to atmosphere, it had an air meter so you could check for air in leakage. So this is one way to pull um, vacuum on a surface condenser and other ways with um, liquid ring vacuum pumps. But this system worked really quite well. <clears throat> Another part of this, you had your high pressure return came back in. I believe that there were just two surface condensers were used, valved in for high pressure return. I'm not sure what the pressure we ran at. I know it was a manual valve had to be adjusted. I think it was between maybe nine and 15 pounds. Um, you had all your traps, surge tank pressure control. The roof traps and drains would come back into this. I know the Hanford generating project took a lot of the high pressure return uh, to number one and two surface condensers. They had a control valve. I'm thinking all the roof, roof traps and drains went back over there. And for startup, we could take it back here but I know we did bring some back. It's probably just our, our traps and local drains. If anybody knows more about high pressure return, um, please let us know. Up here, your condensate to the 184 generator. There was a control valve that opened and dumped that to condensate three if you had a high generator level. Now the condenser, it was 30 foot, six inches long. Uh, 10 foot 4 inches wide and 14 and 4 and a half inches high. The dump condenser condensate pump put out about 315 gallons a minute, uh, 255 foot head and a 40 horse motor. Had drains on each end for draining and then there's man ways you could get in to check for tube leaks and cleaning. And that's kind of it for condensate 4. I say it was just a little piece of pipe suction here. So we just threw more stuff in it. Um, anybody know anything about high pressure return or you have more information, pictures or whatever, please let us know. Some of this is going off of memory and some is off of manuals and um, some stuff that we have. But it's pretty limited, it's been a long time ago. But anyhow, that's condensate four and uh, drive turbine surface condenser hot well. Okay, this is condensate four slideshow. Uh, these are some drawings that we found that are pretty good. Kind of shows what we had on the board, uh, a little more detail. I'm not totally sure how the air is taken off inside, but usually they're coming off somewhere around the middle. There's a hole and there's some tubes missing where there's a space where they can pull the air out of. Uh, they're called steady plates. We call them supports. But this would be the tube area. Down here is the hot well. The water is. Here's the drive turbine condensate pump. This is the first stage impeller here. It's a double suction. Uh, the vent line came off the suction side of this pump down here. So the first stage impeller saw the same pressure inside the surface condenser. So the water would flow by gravity. Uh, the discharge from this fed both second stage impellers on each side. This maintained positive pressure to keep the air out. You had your gland out here with packing. Uh, usually the pump would use the discharge water for feeding in here for the packing. For start, it used them in water. That's the steam jet air ejector. It was kind of threw these in here. It's showing the 184 in, but 109 was the same design. 
Basically you have a steam nozzle that creates a low pressure in here. As you create a high velocity, you create low pressure. So it pulls the air in. And down here you create a slower velocity and raises the pressure. So these will pull a pretty good vacuum. That's why you have two in series that can pull it down very low. Uh, it's just an overview of the drive turbine air system. You have your inner condenser and your after condenser. Kind of shows how they're tied together. This is a diagram of the 109 and steam jet air ejectors. There are two of them. You only ran one set at a time. But you had your steam in, let that pull a vacuum and pull the air in, then it went down here to condense out the moisture. Uh, another set pulled from that. So it could create a really low vacuum, then the condensate was sent back to the surface condenser. And that concludes the slideshow.